Da 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 da. Hi, this is Julie Brown, and this is my podcast, Just Say Julie. Eventually, we're going to have the budget for a real theme song, but we don't yet, so you're going to have to live with this. Da da da. Yeah. Hi, I'm Julie Brown, and welcome to my podcast, Just Say Julie. We think it's called Just Say Julie, but I'm asking MTV for permission to use it because that's what my other show was called, but I kind of don't care what they say because I'm going to use it anyway. But we did ask on Twitter for suggestions for other names, so I'd like your opinion. I'll read what I wrote. Hi friends, I'm going to do a podcast, YouTube show, where I just talk about what's ever fun and stupid, but I don't know if I should call it Just Say Julie or give it a new name like Here's Julie's World. Um, So I asked for everyone's thoughts. Here's what people wrote in. The Julie Brown Unnamed Project. Laugh until you cry with Julie Brown. That's not bad. Julie Brown, dare to be truthful. That references my Madonna thing. Um, Tell me when to stop. I have no filter. Oh, that's, he's saying that. He's saying the thing (laughs) is the suggestion. Even though I kind of like that. Um, Let's see. Just say Julie. Julie to the rescue, saving the world from boredom, one podcast at a time. That's really cute. Just say Julie. Just say Julie. Just say more Julie. Uh, how about say it's Julie's world? Combine the two. Um, I vote just say Julie. It looks like it's going to be just say Julie. Too cool for jewels. Just so long as it's not called the brown note. I would never call it the brown note. I don't even know what that means, but it sounds really disgusting. Stick with Just Say Julie. It's nostalgic and on brown. Don't I sound so Hollywood? Love ya. See, people are so sweet. Um, Just Say Julie, the remix. Just Say Julie, the podcast. Julie's Jewels. Julie, you suck. I I don't know if that's like a suggestion or just a a comment. I'm not going to call it that. Julie Files, like X-Files, or like... For Julie Files, as in a fan base, that's pretty cerebral. And I don't know if I, a lot of my fans would know that, would understand it. Um, just say Julie. Truly Julie. Did my dog fart? I'm sorry, excuse me. My dog just farted. Like, oh, I'm going to soldier. <laughs> it's just unbearable. Um, I shouldn't be giving her hamburgers, right? No. Everybody's pretty much voting for Just Say Julie. Well, I have to ask MTV if I can use that name or we're just going to use it and then ask for forgiveness later because I really want to use it. So thank you, everybody, for your suggestions. We're going to go with Just Say Julie. Sorry, MTV. Sue me. Just Say Julie. I'm just calling it that now. It's going to be um whatever fun or stupid or sexy or weird thing that i want to talk about because it's my show and it's we're shooting it at my house during covid when you can't even have a crew so i really am the boss finally god anyway i am shooting this with my super good friend jessica who is also the producer this is well benny slash jessica benny's her stage name and i keep forgetting because She just changed it. So if I slip, but her real name is Jessica. No, Mm -hmm. Benny Lawrence. (laughs) Benny Lawrence. Um, Anyway, so we've been friends for how long? Since probably probably like three years. It's probably our three-year anniversary. Probably Probably more. I don't know. Wait, no, if it's 2022, then it's been like four years. Oh, my God. We're in our senior year. Yeah, we're in our senior year. And the thing is... In a lot of ways, we shouldn't be friends because... I agree. My therapist, (laughs) when I told him that you were my friend, he said... What? Yeah, he was like, is that healthy? (laughs) I was like, like, you don't know me. (laughs) Yeah, that's really funny. Well, she's younger than me. Um, She's like the age of my son. But I don't know. We get along really great and because... You know, this is the age of you just don't question things, right? Just, just like go- we don't question Brittany's boyfriend. No, we don't question him. We don't question uh, Shay Diaz on Sex and the City. I don't know what that is. I know, is. you don't know, she doesn't know what that is. <laughs> um, and just like that, it's this character who's, uh, I, I, it's almost hard to explain. But if you've seen it, she's a non-binary podcast host played by Sarah Ramirez, who everyone on the internet hates. Oh, okay. Because she had sex with Miranda. She fingered her in the kitchen. And it was a super weird scene. And nobody's happy about it. 
I anyway, hate that person also. Yeah, you hate theirs. So, um, so we're just gonna do this thing and have fun and not take it seriously. A lot of times, people's podcasts seem like they have a serious intent. We're just gonna just do whatever occurs to us that seems fun and funny. That's it. And that's so. And you can, and if you don't like it, then you can. You can fuck right off. I wasn't gonna say it, but there your we therapist go. says it's not healthy. I mean, he's I guess a, so. He's like I guess. a twenty-three-year-old therapist <laughs> student who I paid ten dollars a session. So. Oh my god! What's his name again? Tell them. Well, the whole story is I thought over the phone that they kept saying your therapist's name is Crystal Ball, and I thought for sure he was gonna be, you know. He, it was definitely, you know, he is a he, so I was like, he is definitely, like, you know, eccentric. At yeah. The, in the very yeah, least. Yeah. And he's not eccentric. His name is Cristobal. He's Hispanic. He's and Hispanic. he's a nice man, but maybe, maybe, maybe not that great of a therapist. <laughs> it's because you're paying $10 an hour. You need to pay more. I pay $10 for 45 minutes. Well. That's that's definitely a bargain. It's worse. And, and in this day and age, I've heard that like people are trying to get therapy, you know, during COVID, and they can't even get in anywhere. Like yeah. it's very hard to find a therapist. Yeah. Which is so sad. I mean, and I write things on Twitter sometimes about, you know, being having malaise or something like that, and people are so sad. You know, you just realize people are walking around really struggling yeah so i have a lot of sympathy for everybody because this has been a super hard time everyone i know is struggling because even if you're a cheerful person it's hard to maintain it you know i feel mm -hmm. like i feel like there's days where i absolutely have to talk myself off the ledge totally and, right same and you go all right you don't have to be depressed right now you can just do something work on something have some fun watch a dumb tv show like and you have to find projects around your house yeah which is not easy it's like once you've done everything it's two years now yeah i mean haven't you done everything i mean yeah yeah i, I mean I or live avoided a... everything I have... which is probably closer to what I've yeah i have closets that i'm like i really gotta clean that I got free time. I really got to keep that. <laughs> and I, I have this app on my phone. I'm like, it's time to learn Spanish. So you only have to be on it five minutes a day. And I can't always do that. But I do know, you know, mi abuela. I do know a certain amount of Spanish now. So you basically do speak. You're I basically, basically mi hablo espanol. So I'm trying. Me, um, me amo Jessica. Yes, exactly, exactly. So, Jessica is an I'm actress. I'm, I'm going to talk about you more. I'm calling you Jessica. I know, wait, should we say Benny or should we say Jessica? I keep saying Jessica. Uh-oh, was Benny a mistake? No, Benny's no. fabulous. Her stage name is Benny Lawrence. But because I've known her longer, mm. I slip. But from now on, I'm going to call her Benny. And you're yeah. going to call her Benny And you're going to have a sneak peek. If yeah. you're really watching from the beginning, yeah. you'll have a literal, yeah. these will be literal... Um, Easter eggs or Easter eggs, something. Yeah. Well, this is Benny. She's an actress and a writer, and we met in in, in the Groundlings because mm -hmm. we were both in um, a thing called a Power Wow, yeah, which is an improv. You sign up for it and you do four classes, and then you get to do a show. And the funny thing about it, it's very fun, but you are with improvising with just any yeah anyone. any level of person, and some people are so terrible you know the groundlings themselves are all amazing because I, a lot of it is just practice right and doing it and i think there is some some form of like you you just like get it like yeah you, you get fully it get you it. get it and um beginning improvisers are sometimes so terrible it's it's unbearable to improvise with them and that sounds really mean but if you're up there you're going i don't even know what to do right now but if you're with one of the groundlings on stage it's like effortless. So we were in this class, which is intermediate. They let intermediate people do yeah. power wows. So that means they have a little bit of a clue, but not a complete clue. And there's some shows that were so bad, right? Remember the one where no one laughed the whole time? Yes. And remember the one where Denise, who was a friend of ours. Oh, no. She pretended to give our friend Kaylin a blowjob. And it was like... What like you you're watching it happen and you can't stop it. Yeah, it just and the audience was like, uh, uh, you know, 
The good thing is, don't you tend to forget the ones that are really a failure? Yeah, no, I only, whenever they pop into my head, it's always the best ones. Yeah, the me most too. magical ones. The most magical one where something really incredible happened and, you know, there's a weird feeling like when an improv really works, it's like you're tuning into another zone. Yeah. And you can feel this thing happen and you know what to say and you know what to do. And when it's not working, it's just like the worst kind of mental hell. Yeah. It really is. You're like, where do I go? What do I do? And you're looking at this person and yeah. they look the same way. So, and I miss improv so much, don't you? So much. Yeah. Improv is like the best kind of therapy. Better than crystal ball. Sorry. Way better, Way better than crystal ball. Um, it's, it's like you get to act out your craziness. Right? That's yeah. That's what it feels like. Totally. And like when you're in sync with someone, it's like you're both tuned into like some spiritual like radio. Isn't it? Walkie talkie frequency. And it's like, there's no, there's no better feeling. Other than great sex, but it has a similarity. They're, they're similar. <laughs> they're, they're two different vibes. Yeah, they're two sex different vibes. Sex is like more intimate. Yeah, yeah. Improv, you can share even with, with people who weird audience. you out. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you can even have a good improv with somebody that's a weirdo, yeah. which we've done. Um, but it's, it's a magical thing, and I've even read that it's often a cure. They're starting to realize for things like anxiety and, you know, in... Um, in therapeutic situations, they'll use it because I think because you're externalizing all the all the craziness, all the feeling, all the characters you have in your head. That's mm. how it feels like to me. Yeah, like you get to be this character and then laugh about it. So I miss it so much. It's been so hard to not have that outlet during COVID. Yeah, you know we've done some improv shows on Zoom, but <sighs> Zoom is like. Zoom sucks in so many ways. Well, Zoom is it? just how you kill human connection. Yeah, but but it's not like 100% dead. With no, Zoom. not 100%. But, but as far as like improv, yeah. that requ- I feel like that requires being like in someone's aura, like being yeah. in their energy. It really does. And improv, it's like, you know, I feel like if, if regular improv feels like you're getting 100% of something, Zoom improv feels like 20%. Yeah. And, but it does feel like better than nothing. Yes. Because otherwise you're just sitting at home ugh, freaking out or just watching. I watched every episode of Survivor, which I'm really embarrassed to <laughs> see. I did. It made me happy because it was about a tropical place and people were doing stupid games. Here, here. I want to show Soupy. This is Soupy. She's a little, a wonderful multi poo. She's 14. She's unbelievably sweet and cute. But she does fart sometimes. I guess all dogs do. Um, and I'm getting a new dog in the next week. Um, I don't know what happened to me, but it came over me. Because I used to have two dogs. My other dog, Grover, died in June. And it was so excruciating. Because I was driving him to specialists all over L.A. And he was just really sick. It was for a year. And it just was, it was like really broke my heart. And so I figured I couldn't get another dog yet because I was still so broken hearted. And then it just hit me that I can, I, I'm, I can do this now. I can take care of another dog. So I'm really excited. Stay tuned for my new dog in the next couple weeks. Um, I don't feel like I'm betraying Grover anymore. I feel like Grover's allowing me to have another dog in my life. It's, crazy as that sounds I feel like it's okay but oh it was that was I mean on top of the hardest year ever I had to lose my dog it's unbelievable I'm gonna talk about my dating life even though it's painful (laughs) (laughs) Jessica is currently in a relationship with an adorable guy I'm divorced the, I, my second divorce, so I'm like... Classic. It's classic, and I, I'm going, like, why do I have to do this all over again? I mean, it really feels like this. Like, mm. you something you did already, and you got to do it again. It's like going to the prom. Like, do you really want to go again? No. So, but I have to do it otherwise. I'm just going to die alone. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, well, I'll be there. She'll be here. But I, I have done online dating, and I just don't get it. <laughs> because, first of all, the, there's so little information. I don't know how you're supposed to pick from just 
a picture of a guy and men my age or even younger than me are so dumb and they put the dumbest pictures of themselves up there's like so many classics like there's one where they'll be in bed without a shirt and they go like they're like snap a photo like i guess that's supposed to be like this is what it looks like to be in bed with me and that okay that doesn't work for women men that yeah. doesn't work for women i mean i think men might like that right men might like like if you're just semi naked and looking like you're in bed but i wonder if it's because they think that I they think, would want a photo of a woman i, I in think bed. so i think so and then there's one there's one where they're driving in their car like that's stupid or in the bathroom a selfie in the bathroom so that's so dumb and then there's a whole other level where they're parked in front of their uh boat or their motorcycle now here's what i want to know why do they think a woman over 40 wants to get on a motorcycle mm. we don't or your boat or your boat we don't want to get in any dangerous vehicles <laughs> <laughs> that is not fun. And I think because men can't imagine that what we're looking for is someone who's fun, sweet, normal, you know, upbeat, fun guy. Like, I haven't seen one picture of a guy like barbecuing a hamburger. That would be attractive to me. Yeah. You know, providing. Providing or just being a fun guy, a normal guy. There, oh, there's one guy, like, one guy was in his clown outfit, like he does clowning on the weekend. Another guy had a parrot on his shoulder. And recently this one guy said to me, um, he, we're talking back and forth, and he's seeming kind of normal. And then he goes, you know, sometimes I have a problem with my size. And I wrote back, well, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> like are you heavy? He goes, no, I'm talking about my girth. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I, like and I, I gave the phone to my son and said, answer him. And he wrote, you're... Good luck, good luck finding someone for your girth or something like that. But like, like, why would would that work on any planet with any woman? Would any woman want that? Maybe there's like maybe some woman. Maybe um, maybe like one woman. One woman. But like uh, across the board, if we're generalizing, mm -mm. we don't. But I think men think women want to hear about the act specifics of sex which we do not want to hear about. Yeah, right? especially when we've never met you. Never met you, not want to think about your big honking penis at all. <laughs> like, at all. Um, I don't know if I've ever encountered a honking penis. <laughs> Me either, but, you know, <laughs> girth. What does girth mean? I mean, that's just, like, unbelievable. And you know what? He probably doesn't have a, a big penis. No. He's probably just saying that to entice me. Yeah, you know, I think so. I entice. Think so. And then there was a guy who was he, was, he was seeming normal. Then he said, he goes, I really like wine. And I go, I don't, I don't drink. He goes, oh, I like wine. I, I have a bunch in my garage. I go, what, how much? He goes, well, I have six refrigerators with wine in it. <laughs> and like that, like uh. this guy didn't ever think like that would be a turnoff to me. Yeah. If I don't drink. Six refrigerators full of wine is just alcoholic. Yeah. So um, that didn't work out. And then there was a time when I met one guy. I was going to meet him at a place, and his name was Thor. So um, I show up, and I look around, and it doesn't look like he's there. But I see one guy who actually looks cuter than I thought the guy was going to look like. And I go up to him, and I say, are you Thor? And he goes, yes, I am. And I go, oh, well, hi. Um... I, you know, I've never, I've never met anyone in a bar that I hadn't talked to on the phone first. And he goes, neither have I. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, so we're talking. Then I realize he's not the Thor I was talking to. And I go, are you really Thor? And he said, yes. So we're talking more. And I think, then I start to think, mm. he thinks I'm just some crazy woman trying to hit on him. You're like we're, a crazy psychic woman because you've guessed his exactly. name. Exactly. Or like, so, and then... And then the the real Thor texts me that he's stuck on the freeway. He finally gets there, but I'm just excited to bring him over to the original Thor and say, look, see, he's Thor, so he doesn't think I was trying to hit on him. Yeah. So the two Thors are like, you're Thor too. And then they're shaking hands and comparing notes, and I'm like, and then I, I just left because they started like having a Thor off or something. And I was going, I don't want to be with either of them. And another thing that guys do a lot is... They don't go to the dentist. I know, that's really terrible, and I feel bad saying it, but...
go to the dentist. You know, women care about teeth much more than a boat. Much more. Well, so does your brain. <laughs> so does your brain. So go to the dentist. Um, so I, I don't know. I find it super difficult because I really have to know the person's vibe and their personality. And you can't get that from a picture. No, you can't. You can't. You can't, you can't I, smell them. You can't smell You need smell to smell them. a person you before. You can't get their like sense of humor. And I think maybe it works better for men because men are visual. And they're looking at a woman and they're like, oh, she's hot. But... It just doesn't work for me. And it works for some people, right? Obviously. Yeah. But it's just been not that successful. <laughs> so any suggestions, please write to us and give me suggestions for who I could date. Yeah. And I also don't know, if, can you use eyelashes more than once? I've never used eyelashes. <laughs> You're so not a drag queen. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think you have to use eyelashes. I if love you don't, well, if you don't eyelashes. want to, no. But I love them. Well, there you go. And I've been meaning to ask my drag queen friends how many times, how many uses they get out of eyelashes, and I keep forgetting. But I, I had to use hmm. these again, and, and sometimes they're they're harder to get on. So oh, maybe I'll just buy since I'm doing a podcast now. Maybe I'll just buy all kinds of boxes of them. Oh, you and totally I'm put should. Put some on you too. Do it. Yeah, I've never She's done it. Be made up next time you see her. <laughs> I'm wearing mascara, which is made up no, for me, you look really and pretty. just lotion. See, that's because you're you're like a child. You can just wear, <laughs> <laughs> you just wear nothing. You can you're nothing. like a child. You're like a child. Oh, I nothing. am. I basically am a baby. I know. So, so but I'm gonna put makeup. You're gonna be all drag queened up next time they see you. I love it. I know. It'll be really fun. I wish I was super good at makeup. I'm not super good. And I really don't no. I'm no. I'm not. And I, I look at drag queens, like, when you really look at them, some of them. Mm -hmm. They look like paintings. They're geniuses. Like, like unbelievable. And that must require hours and hours and hours of practice and tips and makeup tutorials. And I, I just respect the art of it so much. Yeah, you know? me too. I mean, they're... If you go online and look at them, it's, it's gorgeous, you know? So I, I feel like I should... Because I love them and I feel they're my people. I feel like I should get much better at this. So I'm going to try. You could totally probably interview I know, drag queens and stuff I know. Too. I met, um, well I know a lot of them, but I met the new drag queen for me, Ben De La Creme, um, at Casa de, Casita Del Campo a few weeks ago. And she was so sweet and really beautiful. And she was in Golden Girls. Her makeup was amazing. So Not the real Golden Girls. No, the fake Golden Girls. But... Um, Maybe, maybe she would help me. Maybe, like, I've, I've thought about that, like, having a drag queen help me, which we could film. That would be really that cool. That would be so amazing, because they know more than probably all women about yeah. makeup and stuff, so. Because they have to spend so much more time, like, accessing the information yeah. about it, so they're obviously just going to learn more. They're experts. I mean, they're like, you know, like, like, Ben De La Creme's like a nuclear physicist about makeup. And I'm just like a girl who works at, you know, CBS. So <laughs> there's a big difference. Not even, so you don't even work at Sephora. No, I don't even work at Sephora. There's a big difference in skill level. So I would love to do that on the show. We will do that. We'll um, have drag queens teach us how to do makeup. That'd be really cute. It would be important. It's an important thing to learn. I agree. Like, yeah. I've always wanted to learn. And... I, I feel like I've always been attracted to, like, a, a natural thing. Right. But I think that's also a product of growing up in the early 2000s. Like, yeah. that was sort of the vibe. was, like, right. at least where I grew up was, like, surfer girl. like Right. See, I've always been really attracted to looking as fake as possible. <laughs> and um, that's from when I grew up. And I always... The other thing I really love is, like, Mexican soap operas. Oh, my God. That, that They're drag queens. But I, I remember going, I want my look. Like on Strip Mall, when I did Strip Mall, I wanted my look to be a combination of drag queens and Mexican soap operas. And my makeup girl did that. I loved it so much. But it's pretty artificial. Yeah. I love it, though. I mean, you feel like such a, a beautiful woman. <laughs> like a beautiful You woman. are a beautiful woman. Thank you. But I feel even more beautiful like that. So that's coming up. So stay tuned. Why um, is The Bachelor... This is my question to you. Yeah. Why is The Bachelor so good? The Why Bachelor is, is so good because there are girls on this season who are absolute bitches. <laughs> <laughs> they are so pure evil. Shanae is unbelievable. 
Cassidy was really good. And at first I thought she was our, our hero. Yeah, yeah our, our antagonist. Villain. Our yeah. Villain, yeah. Um, and she was great. And she was just like sliming all over <laughs> the plate and at the pool. And she was just sitting on his lap and being really gross. And then... She and Shanae became friends, which is really funny. Cassidy was, like, coaching Shanae yeah. on, like, Shanae, like, you need to, like, get in there. And that's right. when Shanae, like, it's like her, it's like when somebody smokes weed and they say, you know, smoking weed can, like, make you lose your mind if you have yeah. that in you. That's what happened to Shanae. She went bananas. <laughs> and then Cassidy kind of sold Shanae out. Totally sold Shanae out. she was Shanae talking out. to Clayton. And, and so, but then he, but then he tried to track down who's the bad one. And, which is really funny because the other girls are like, do I tell him how bad the other girls are? Does that make me look bad? But they really want to. You can yeah. see it's like they're just going, oh, I want to talk about what a bitch she is so bad. So he had to figure out who was the bitch. And he kind of did. He he let Cassidy go. I mean, he let Cassidy go, I think, because she had like a mental breakdown. But yeah. I think like he, either he's one being too led by his dick to have Shanae leave. Yeah, that's what, I know there's a theory that... Her boyfriend, Luke, yeah. says Shanae is the hottest of the girls. And that yeah. all guys are in love with her. Which, I don't see it, but, you know, maybe that's a, that's a guy point of view. Why do men like Shanae so much? She's pretty. She's pretty, but I think she's it's the promise of being evil and dirty and, mm. you know, nasty and being willing to do whatever. I think that's partly, because I don't know that she's prettier than the other girls, but she's nastier. Yeah. And she seems like she's willing to do whatever to get him. And he probably, do you think that he just wants to sleep with her and see, like, if it's that good? Yeah. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, I don't, you know, it, feel, it feels like sometimes so hard to get in the mind of a straight man. But from what I get, they just think about that almost, <laughs> right? It, I mean, I guess so. Yeah. I think Luke is a hopefully, like, I think he's a special case because he... Yeah. It was a fat kid, so he doesn't, like, think of every woman as, like, a sexual object. Right, right. But I think, like, and probably Luke, I mean, probably Luke doesn't tell me everything. He doesn't. <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't, because you would be horrified. Yeah, I know. You'd be horrified. Um, I think straight men think about it constantly, and we don't even, we can't even imagine how much they think about it. It's sort of the same way, I think. When men are watching football and then they tell you about it, and they can't even imagine how much we don't care. <laughs> the level yeah. that we don't care about football or cars. Like, they can't even mm. fathom that we go, I don't know, care what you're saying. So I think that's how straight men are about women. And Shanae is just promises, you know. But the other thing is we have to consider that the producers won't let them get rid of Shanae because... She makes good television because she's yeah. horrible. I mean, she gives people the fingers. She laughs like a maniac, like a psychopath. Yeah. I mean, I live for that. So I hope they don't get rid of her till the end. I think that the per I have a feeling she might be one of the t ending no, three. No, no. Yeah. Because I think that that's how well she does on TV. Wow. Well, the thing is, like, they said there's some rumor that he slept with by the very end he did sleep with two of them right well that's what i saw on a trailer so yeah. i'm a, i think that they just like fed that so i'll watch the whole season right which right, i right. would anyway I you didn't have to give that much no, away no i wouldn't either and the other thing is like i think you said it i thought everyone that goes to the fantasy suite has sex okay i maybe the <laughs> viewers your fans should tell us what they think because right. i thought for sure like like, they most of the time probably don't actually sleep together. Yeah, I thought this, especially if it's The Bachelor, and he gets a chance mm. to go in there with um, these different women, are they going to say no? No. I just feel like if I went on that show and I was one of the top and I really actually was in love with the guy and wanted to marry him, and he was going things with other women, I'd be like, one... If you sleep with another woman, it's over. Right. And then two, I would say, we're not sleeping together because, like, I want I want you to feel, like, tested a little bit. Right. You know, like, I, yeah. hold out, make him hold out. Yeah. Make but... his balls just real blue like your vest, <laughs> like your jacket. Like my jacket. Well, a lot of girls, they, they just go with, let's do it all. Let's give it, and he'll be won over by my enthusiasm and oh. my sexual techniques. That's what some of them do. But I think there's a couple I've seen that, 
hold back and think that's the way to go. But I don't know why. In my head, I assumed for all these seasons, they're all having sex when they go to the fantasy suite. I thought that's what it meant. Like, you want to go to the fantasy suite? I thought that meant, do you want to have sex with me? That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Honestly, maybe you're right because maybe I'm just going in being very naive because I have only slept with Luke. So I, because I, but I also don't want to sleep. No, I, I know. never wanted that. I know. You're so, you're so wonderful. I'm basic, you're so wonderful. I'm like a baby angel. You are a baby angel. <laughs> and I am not a baby angel. Um, so that's really awesome though. But remember that one guy, Peter, who slept with Hannah in the windmill? Do you remember that? No. Okay. There's this girl named Hannah Brown who was insane, but she, she, one of the guys that she finally got with was the pilot, this pilot, Peter, and he slept with her in a windmill, but I sort of assumed he'd slept with everybody and that she'd slept with everybody because she was making a, a big thing out of being sexually free, you know, like mm. I do what I want. I sleep with people in a windmill if I feel like it. So mm -hmm. I just assume that's, you know, that, but you know what? We won't really know. We're not, because I think maybe the producers keep it vague just so that you don't know. I right. wish they would film it. Like they do in Survivor. In Survivor, yeah. if people are banging, you see it. You do? I mean, Wait. they they have to blur it out. They do? I haven't seen that. You've never have you seen Survivor? Yes, I've watched lots of Survivor. I and you've seen... never seen when they like make out and they like bang in the huts? No! Oh my god. You know what I have seen on Survivor is people masturbating. Ew! Yeah, I know, I know. Julie. I know. No, they showed especially this one guy. They showed him and he's behind a rock. And there's no way he was doing anything else. There's, <laughs> It was hilarious. So, I mean, I, I haven't seen people have sex on Survivor. I, I left out. I hope I'm not making that up because I feel yeah. like I have seen it. Well, the thing is, that is really a family show. Like, they expect that to be a family show, mm. right, in CBS? So, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I just haven't seen it. Or maybe you just imagined it. Well, okay, here's the thing. Maybe I did imagine it because I watched Survivor as a kid. Uh -huh. I haven't seen it okay. as an adult, so this is like... Oh, yeah. So maybe they just kissed and I th have thought that they thought had that. sex. Well, I have a confession because the pandemic was so intense and weird and I did not know what to watch. And my son was home. He was, he was home because he got to work at home. We watched every season of Survivor. Oh, so you would know. That's what I mean. Yeah. I do know. There was no, because uh, I would have been going like, oh, I'm watching people have sex and my son's right here. But we watched mm. every season of Survivor, which I'm kind of embarrassed to say because it's not like intellectually, you know, a, a thing to do. But it was so relaxing because it was people on a desert island and it was beautiful and nothing really mattered. You know, this, the game is just a dumb game. And, yeah. And, you know, COVID was like, being in some altered universe sometimes, wasn't totally. it? Totally. So it was just really relaxing to me. Um, but I don't share that with many people that I watched every season of Survivor recently. <laughs> Recent, <laughs> recently. Recently. So I don't remember any sex on Survivor. I think you're probably right then. Yeah. But wouldn't it be better if they did? It would be so much better. Because you be, know they're I'd doing it. I'd be much it. more interested in the show, in... in what happened because you they kind of make it so that once people are sleeping you're supposed to like just assume they're all you know just asleep they don't like yeah keep keep storylines going you know occasionally when someone sneaks out to look for an idol or something but um that would be so much better but are there ones like that there's like tv shows like sex island or, or things like that there are shows like that yeah i don't know if i want to watch those because people are so dumb well right i mean have you seen Bachelors in Paradise? Yes, I actually love that. That's a great show. I love show. Bachelors in Paradise. And they do sometimes show when they're having sex yeah, on that do. show. That's, and that's not a lie. No, that is a different case. I love Bachelor in Paradise because you kind of can't believe people are being that dumb. I know. But then you give them, you kind of cut them some slack because they're all so young. Do you think they're age. doing characters though? Um, occasionally. They I might think be. that sometimes. People get on that show and they like are doing it for the followers, I guess. Yeah. Which is, I guess, takes a lot of planning. Like, I don't think I'd be able to plan that far ahead. No. <laughs> but I think they get on the show and they know yeah. that if they go crazy. Well, they, they all know, you know, they, they all want followers. And then they think, I better do something crazy to get my followers excited or mm. talking, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think they do. I love that show. I can't wait for that to come back. Does that, when does that come back? I don't know. Didn't COVID affect that at all? Probably not. 
I okay. Wait, I have a, a theory that I don't think I've yeah. even told you. I have a theory that. <laughs> okay, it's a little bit conspiracy. Okay, okay good. I okay. love that. Love conspiracy. <laughs> I have a conspiracy theory that it, because like Bachelor, uh, the Bachelor and the Bachelorette and Bachelors in Paradise continue to go through COVID. I'm convinced the U.S. government needs the Bachelor, the Bachelorette, and Bachelors in Paradise to keep going because it like calms a significant portion of Americans down, so it can never end. You know what? You might be right because honestly, when I was watching Survivor, I noticed it was like taking drugs. I yeah, thought it was like taking a Xanax. So maybe that is true. I mean, that's not like that's not totally insane. Like. They have that much influence over millions yeah. and millions of people. And people stop thinking about, like, COVID if they're watching if, you know, Peter's going to have sex at a windmill. Yeah. She could be onto something. Not all conspiracy theories are <laughs> bullshit, right? It could be, like, I mean, or it just could be, like, you know, people of influence take advantage of their influence. But I don't know. Could be that the government's behind The Bachelor. <laughs> da 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 yeah so that's the first episode of just say julie i hope you liked it it was really fun we're gonna do anything in future episodes i mean i don't know what it's gonna be because i thought it'd be so much fun to shoot something at my house with no format so that you have to keep watching because anything could happen see you next time <laughs>